President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, for selecting young Nigerians to also be part of his cabinet, especially the women and the youths. With regards to our brother, Dr. Boston, congratulations. But Mr. President, I wish to advise this young man that there are times, no matter the level of our frustration, we must be cautious with what we write on the social media. I'm saying this because I have another tweet from him, which was written by him by 10.05 p.m. in April 21st, 2021. With the kind permission of Mr. President, I would like to read this tweet. He said, who conducted a security check on him when he was appointed? What sort of checks are done by at the Nigerian Senate when they confirm appointees and the media? Question for another day. Until we ask the right questions, these morons will continue to take us for granted. Mr. President, sir. Mr. President, I want to Mr. President, like I said earlier, this is a young man who is well read. I want to ask, having come from my alma mater, I'm also from the University of Joss, and I've taught there in the University of Joss for 15 years. I find it very difficult to believe that a graduate of University of Georgia will write this on the personality of the Nigerian Senate. I want to ask, sir, are you the author of this tweet or not? Thank you. Well, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, Senate leader. <laughs> Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues. I have a perspective to share with our distinguished colleagues. And I have a perspective to share with Nigerians, especially those among our youth who in the last 48 hours since the name of Dr. Bosun Tijani was sent to this hallowed chamber as a ministerial nominee. Our youth are divided on this matter. There are some who are supporting him. There are some who are also sharing other tweets from him similar to those that have been read out here. The truth about it is, beyond these two tweet messages, there are some other ones being shared online. And what is the underlining thing here? And what is the perspective that I want to share? Consider the dates of, this, uh, of these tweets and recall the events that took place in Nigeria. Some of my own children and some of our own children were all part of these tweets. Standing between, before us, sir, is an, is, I mean, an NSAS protester if you can so classify him. That is the truth about it. My own daughter, who was not born in Nigeria, I didn't hide my family in the U.S., I didn't take my family out of, the, out of Nigeria after I came into public service. I was in the U.S. doing my master's degree. I was there practicing as an attorney. 
when I gave birth to my own children. So they were not born here. But when my daughter was done schooling, she told me she wanted to come to Nigeria for her national service. And I was very glad. My daughter joined the NSAS protests. Around the same time, all these tweets were going on. Very many of our own children asked us questions. Mr. Mr. Pre Mr. President, I need your protection. All I'm trying to do is share a perspective. The same president, these are the issues for me. Number one, number one, an NSAS prote protester who believed he was a spokesperson for his own generation today has come to see the need to join hands with us to build this nation and bring all those ideas around with the organized protest on board to further build Nigeria and rebrand Nigeria. That's number one. More importantly, number two, the same President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, a citizen as he then was, not in any official position, who was accused or alleged as having taken soldiers to toll gate plaza in Lagos to, sh to shoot NSAS protesters, is the one who today, by the grace of God, as President and Commander-in-Chief of Nigeria, has sent Dr. Bosun Tijani as a nominee to this chamber because he also believes that they have something to offer. So let's look at it from all these perspectives and know that this man standing be before us did what any of our children could have done. At that point, based on their own understanding of what's going on, he, 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 he portrayed a scenario of how most of the people he was struggling to help were being arrested by the police because they had laptops in their bags, not because they were criminals. Let us remember what happened in this country. We need to move on with this generation. We need to put this behind us. So, of course, if he said anything that he shouldn't have said, he's here to apologize. That's not the, the problem. But let's take it beyond that and be less emotional about this issue. But we must protect the integrity of this institution. I agree, you know, with our colleagues who are saying this. And our whole youth must also learn from this that even in the face of anger or protest, you must mind the language that you use. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Well, let me, uh, just before I listen to any other thing, let me point out the, the, the distinguished, uh, distinguished uh, leader of the Senate, that even if it was that your child that came before us here, that child will still face the same question. The, the questions being asked, are not, uh, nobody, I don't think any of them has ever met him. I don't think any, any person here has any objection to his nomination. I don't think anybody here is against him. We are rather appreciative of Mr. President's choice. However, sometimes the past has a way of following us. And I think, I think we can make progress. I will give you an example. The National Digital Economy Policy and Strategy 2020 to 2023 that involves ICT parks, entrepreneurship, innovators, innovators, youth empowerment, which will break it down to solid infrastructure, soft infrastructure, service infrastructure. All these policies, we were part of those who developed these policies that he believes can empower young people. When Mr. President was coming on board at Eagle Square, I said that I learned a lot from him when he was governor. I turned boys into men as a governor in my state, and that he, he would come, if he won the election to be president in Nigeria, that he would turn a lot of Nigerian boys into men. I think this is one of such. Now, if we want to, if we sit here for the next five minutes, somebody will bring out another very derogatory uh, tweet from him, whether it was done in the heat of anger, or whether it was uh, in collaboration with your child, I, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> but uh, the major thing there is that he has a very good opportunity on live television 
to tender apologies to his elders for his uh, youthful exuberance and his mistakes that we move on. Dr. 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 Tijani, Dr. Bozu Tijani, this last speech and many others that will come, like the one you call your elder. Look at somebody like look at somebody like Senator Gumel. I'm sure he was in the Senate there when you said that he was a maroon. So uh, 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 do you still believe that senators are maroons? Or do you have an apology to make? You can send that an apology, we can move on. And then if you also believe now in your Nigeria, we can still move on. Your Excellency, uh, um, Senate President, and also uh, distinguished senators, <laughs> distinguished senators, um, I was raised properly as a Yoruba boy, both in Agege and Abeokuta, so I do understand that we're not meant to disrespect our elders, and that's not the training that we're given. Uh, my father probably won't be proud of me uh, for all these allegations. But one thing you'll be proud of as well is that the passion that led me to those mistakes has also given me the opportunity to contribute to the development of this country. So I want to profusely apologize to everyone in this hall, including anyone anywhere in Nigeria that may have been offended about everything I said. I ask that you please, in the process of accepting my apology, that you look at the undertone of everything I've said. I didn't say it to spite. I said it out of frustration and love. So please accept my sincere apologies, please. Of the mind. Of the mind. Of the mind. Uh, distinguished senators, distinguished colleagues, we have before us. A young man, a young Nigerian. <laughs> Senator. Distinguished senators, distinguished senator, please again accept my apology if I went too far in explaining. I'm absolutely sorry for for everything I've said. I'm sorry. Distinguished senators, we are all fathers, except for Senator Jimmy Kuta, who is not yet married. Let, let, we are all fathers. And our children do air. We cannot throw the baby with the bad water away. We recognize his intellect. We recognize his contribution. We thank Mr. President for being a forgiving father, despite all these tweets. And I think on behalf of the Senate, I want to accept your apology. And uh, uh, keep up the good work of creating opportunities for young people to grow, uh, so that they will not uh, have the kind of anger that led you to uh, make all those tweets. Your apology, your apologies are uh, accepted. Uh, congratulations on your nomination. You may now step forward, take a bow, and leave. Point of order, Mr. President. No, not on this matter. Not on this matter. Not on this matter. Point of order.